So this is a little video about a mini with a knackered reverse lamp. There's the owner, very unhappy that his light doesn't work. So he called me the fault finder and I'm going to sort it out and show you a couple of tricks how to get this thing sorted. So first off, we've got a battery in this circuit, of course. Everything starts with a battery. Then we've got the gearbox. That's the physical actuation, which lifts the reverse switch up. Then you've got the fuse for the reverse switch itself, a ground for the back light. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without the lamp itself. You've got the bulb, the holder, and the wiring. Oh, four things to think about there. The wire, which is the yellow wire, that's coming straight from our reverse switch, output, straight to the back lamp. Simple as that. Intermediate connector, which is on the left front headlamp uh, area on a mini. Very important. And last but not least, the thing itself, the reverse switch, which is a simple on-off switch, pushed up by the gearbox when the guy puts the car in reverse. Now we need to test it, don't we? That's the easiest place to start. But before you start pulling switches out, all you need to do first is take the connector and disconnect it from the switch. You've got your 12 volt in, you can confirm that. Just bridge it. If you've got 12 volts out, like Baz Meredith there, my mate, will do with a split pin, which is a perfectly acceptable me uh, method of doing it. If your lamp comes on at the back and it's nice and bright, You've just diagnosed it in two seconds. You've got a good ground, a good bulb, good holder, and a good power supply. It can only be the switch or the gearbox. What do we do there? Well, the yellow switch there, we disconnected it and we bridged the connector and we got a good light. We got a nice powerful lamp at the back, proving everything is okay. It can only be the switch or the gearbox. So we can't really look at the gearbox, but what we can do is remove the switch, unscrew it, and when it's not pressed, you should have infinite resistance. No beep on a continuity test, but when I love Deborah there, presses it, our mechanic, you should have a beep, or 0 0.1, 0 0.2 ohm, something like that. It must change states. If it doesn't, you've got a knackered switch. If it does, and you've got good wiring, you might have a knackered gearbox. Very unlikely though, so we're not even going to discuss that in this scenario. How about if we bridge it and the light doesn't come on? That's more likely, isn't it? We have that a lot on cars nowadays. What are we going to do then? to solve that. What's the easiest? Well, go to the light first, open it, power it with a power probe. If it lights, the bulb is okay and the light's okay. What about if we have a voltage drop though from the switch? Well, that's what that looked like, but this is what a voltage drop wouldn't look like. So if you've got a dim bulb, you've got a drop. If you don't, you haven't. So how about this one? Got a voltage drop there, the bulb's dim. 12 volts on the power supply and we've got zero volts on the ground. Now then, could it be the wiring? Yes, it can be, because we're not loading the wiring with anything. Could have resistance in a bulb socket, but you could have 12 volts on a wire, but when you suddenly load that wire with 12 volts, it might drop. You'll see that shortly. In this case, we've got a massive drop of 10 volts. Bulb is hardly lit at all. If we put in a big halogen bulb and test it, we find we've got a ground, but suddenly our 12 volts has dropped to 1.2 volts. Why? Because we're loading it. We're stressing it. We're stress testing it. Suddenly, the resistance makes itself known, and we don't have 12 volts anymore. We have a tenth of it. We could also have resistance in the wiring too. It's up to you to determine where the problem lies. You can go down the harness and until you find 12 volts. That's usually the best way. So this scenario, we've got no light at all. We've got 12 volts unloaded on the power. But we've got no ground. When we see 12 volts on a ground, it means we don't have a ground. Easy. Put a ground on it, it'll work. How about this scenario? Zero on the power supply and 12 volts further down the line. Easy. We've got a broken wire. Easy. It must have a broken wire because it's picking up the ground because the ground's intact, but there's no power supply at that point in the brake. How about if you have a really skanky looking ground? Don't think that it might be bad. In this case, it looks bad, but you've got a good ground, zero volts, because behind the nut is okay. However, what if the wire breaks? Suddenly we've got 12 volts, haven't we? Because when you have 12 volts, there's no potential difference. Current can't flow and it just sits there because it can't go back to the negative terminal. So this is a good circuit, nice bright lamp, 12 volts at the top, loads and loads of power. And we've got potential difference because we've got a zero volt return. And that is the potential difference calculation on the screen there. That is a good circuit. Everything's flowing in one nice lovely loop. However, how about we have a corroded ground? Got a voltage drop. Simple as that. We've got an 8 volt drop because we've got a massive resistor placed in the way. And it is just like a resistor. That is all it is, resistance. So we have, an, we have 8 volts and 4 volt drop. 
Simple as that. How about a broken connection? Even easier. Imagine this guy now. He's the negative um, sort of electrons that he cannot get back with his mates to the battery because there's a broken connection. So it just hangs around and manifests it as 12 volts. It's as simple as that. How about this one? Typical positive side. We've got 6 volts after some resistance. Again, go down the harness until you find 12 volts. At that point, chop it out because that's where your resistance is. That's one way of checking. Now what we're going to cover shortly in this is how to find it. But just a quick one, if you have a harness with, a, say, a broken wire, you've got 12 volts, just keep going down. Keep going down until you find the break. It's as simple as that. And there you are. Now what I've got now is a little treat for you. I've got a stem kit, and I'm going to show you in real terms how this all manifests itself, and it's going to be much easier. So what we're looking at there is we're looking at our 4.5 volt circuit without any load on it, without any, sorry, without any resistance on it whatsoever. And we're going to look at the relationship between current and resistance. So I'll just tell you straight, without any bullshit, when the resistance increases, the current simply decreases. There's nothing more scientific or fancy I need to explain or you need to stress about. Don't worry about all this Ohm's Law bullshit. It's amazing, but there's a time and a place for it. All you need to remember is, if I've got resistance, my current's going to decrease and that's why my bulb's as dim as shit. Or in this case, the bulb is as bright as hell because we're looking at, and we're on the 0.6 amp scale there, we're looking at 0.33 maybe, I would say. 0.33 amp draw. So what we're going to do now is we're going to now int introduce an artificial resistance using our absolutely amazing, uh, you know, resistance board. So let's start with a nice easy 5 ohm job because 5 ohms isn't really like, you know, huge, is it? And we're just putting it in series on the uh, positive side. So we're going to induce a voltage drop. So we have 0.33 of an amp before, if, if you can all kind of remember that. So we're going to use a nice black cord wire because, <laughs> you know, it's all safe and all that. And there we are. We've got a dimmer bulb. It's noticeably dimmer. And, oh, look. Wow. Our current has dropped like a bleeding stone, hasn't it? What are we on the point? 0.24 maybe, 0 0.26, 0 0.26 of an amp from 0.33. So it's dropping, isn't it? So let's now crank up to 10 ohms and see what the hell happens there. That should be extremely interesting. And just as we expected, we've got a dimmer bulb still. We're at 0 0.2, are we? Yeah, 0 0.2, so it's dropped a bit more. Come on then, let's keep going now. Let's go to 15 ohms. We've got less voltage and got less current now, haven't we? Oh man, that's really resisting it. What's that? Less than 0.2, isn't it? 0.18 maybe, something like that. Right, let's just skip straight to the 20 ohms now and see. Bulbs as dim as hell, as you can see. The bulb's doing nothing. Let's see what happens with 20 ohms. There should be virtually no current here, surely to God. Oh yeah. It's dropping, it's trying its best, but bulb is extremely dim. We're down to what we're down to there on this extremely good Chinese quality meter. 0.1... 2.14.14 so we've gone down quite a lot haven't we basically so let's put this back to how it was very 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 briefly just so we have a good idea let's get rid of our amazing resistance board let's go back to full chat oh look at that jesus so you can see the violence that needle moves with some severe violence doesn't it beautiful and sexy because our bulb is now bright as hell and we have no impediment to current flow. So there you are, guys and gals. A good video for you that proves that when you have resistance, your current drops like a stone. So the way we've got this one wired up now, obviously, it's a, a voltage drop on the ground. It might be pretty hard for you to see from the diagram, but we've actually got three 1.5 volt wired up in series. And obviously, the sum total, we add them together, so it's 4.5 volts. Now... We've got the positive side going straight to here without any form of resistance. However, as you can see on the ground circuit here from our bulb, which is now glowing extremely dim, we do have a resistance and we actually have 10 ohms resistance. Now we can use Ohm's law to calculate it, but the video isn't kind of about that. It's about voltage drop. Now, I don't really want to cover Ohm's law purely and simply because there's lots of videos out there and it's kind of beyond the scope of this video. I want to show you because we've seen lots of lovely whiteboard variations of this of what it looks like in real life. So 
what we'll do is, first of all, we'll take a normal voltage measurement. Imagine this is our reverse bulb on our mini. I haven't got a 12 volt power supply, so we just have to imagine. So if we just go from negative to positive on the bulb as though we were measuring voltage. What will we get? Well, first of all, let's put the mass tech at least maybe sideways so we can at least see it. It's not really ideal sideways, but the way I've got the camera set up, that's unfortunately the way we're going to have to kind of do it. And our reading is 1.57 volts. Let's just call it 1.5 volts for clarity's sake. So our voltage drop with it being on the ground. If we go basically to the negative part of our battery, so it was our car battery, negative side. Then if we go to the negative of the lamp itself, we have a voltage drop of 2.7 volts. It's more or less the same. If we just simplify it and say 2.5 plus 1.5, that's basically, you know, 4.5 volts. And that's the sum total of the, of the batteries. So that's a really good example of voltage drop. So how about would we make... A bit of a less resistance, so it's not quite as bad and not quite as dramatic. So if we just take this out of here and swap it to a different resistor, in this case, 5 ohms, so it's a lot, you know, less, it's still a lot, 5 ohms. Let's see what that does. Aha, uh -huh. first of all, the ammeter shot up like crazy. Don't know if you saw that. Because we're now able to flow, flow more current because our bulb is visibly brighter, as you can see. So the beauty of this is that we can flow more current. Let's take a voltage reading at our reverse lamp on our lovely little mini. And if you can just see that, that reading, we've got 2.29 volts, a little bit more than before. You just uh, keep that on for you so you can see it. Don't you love this Mastec lamp uh, meter? It doesn't stay on for literally two seconds, this. Uh, 2.3 2 volts. So we've got a resistance, but we've got less resistance. So let's look at the total voltage drop on our ground this time. Let's see if it's as severe as it was before. What are we looking at this time? Uh, 1.8 volts. So we've only got 1.8 volt drop now. And that's obvious because if we reduce the resistance on the ground circuit, we're only going to have a, uh, we're going to have a less of a drop, aren't we? If, if I had a resistor even smaller, we could get even sort of less of a voltage drop. Now let's look at this uh, in real life without any form of... Actually, what I will do is I'll just very quickly show you what we're drawing there. So we're drawing the... Oh, I can't really see. It depends what scale you're using. I'm using the smaller scale. So I think it's 0 0.24 of an amp, basically, because we're using the 0.6 scale. So we'll say that's 0 0.24 of an amp, according to this uh, amazing <laughs> meter. What we'll do now is we will now disconnect everything completely. Let's open our switch for safety reasons, obviously, a little Chinese switch. And what we'll do now is we'll just basically... Um, connect this directly to the uh, bulb, but we'll still keep the ammeter. The ammeter is essentially just in series anyway, so on the on the ground side of it, basically. So what we'll have to do in that case now is essentially um, take this off and supply our ground. And now, in theory, we should have a very powerful bulb with no resistance whatsoever on it. There we are. And now, as you can see, we're drawing like just a huge amount more. We're drawing a raft load more. So in this scenario, if you remember in the video, when we had the scenario where <coughs> we had the voltage, so we've got the four, almost a four and a half volts. We've got 4.28 volts there. But then we went to the ground and on the ground, we had exactly the same 4.28 volts on the ground, but why Why do we have that? Well, if you remember in the video, when there is no ground, you'll have, on a car, you'll have 12 volts. And the reason is, is because the electron flow on this side and the current flow on this side, they need to, the voltage needs to drop over this bulb and it needs to then go back down the back to the battery. Well, it can't, it just hangs around, can't do anything. It can't go back to a battery if there's no return path via the ground. Now, a lot of people will argue with this and they'll start saying, yeah, but actually current flows from ground to positive and not from positive to negative. Well, it does actually. 
but no one really gives a shit and it doesn't even matter to be honest. All you're doing is confusing people. All you need to know is you've got the same voltage there as you've got there because there's no potential difference. So it can't do shit, it can't flow back anywhere. Don't you just love my science lessons, my automotive technology lessons? I don't really care. That's how it is. Now, we have got a return path. So we won't have, a, have a, the same, this same 4 and a half volts. There's nothing. Look. Simple as that. That the normal voltage job that we saw before. So what we're going to do now is... We're going to now put on a really crazy, crazy resistance. We're going to put like 20 ohms on this now. And it's going to be like proper dim. It probably won't even light up, I don't think, to be fair. Let's put our 20 ohms on and see what happens. Jesus. You can't really see that. If I turn my light off in the room, you might be able to see that. It's literally dim as anything. You just can't really make it out, to be fair. So what we're going to do is we're going to ground our meter. And our mini, because the guy's complaining because the bulb's dim, it hardly works. And we're going to do a normal voltage reading. Jesus Christ, 0.81 of a volt. So when we put on a load of 20 ohm, like a really bad 20 ohm resistor, which is getting quite warm actually. We've lost our voltage, you've got the biggest voltage drop you've ever seen in your life, 0.82. Jesus Christ, it's terrible, isn't it? So yeah, that's a big massive voltage drop here, isn't it? Again... We've got our ground hooked up. Let's do a voltage drop to the ground. We've got no problem with the ground. Look, got negligible voltage drop. So what we're going to now do is, as we know we've got like, we should have four and a half. We've got 0 0.8. We should have a massive drop here of like over three volts. So let's go battery positive to, to uh, lamp positive. There we are. 3.30 volt drop. Frig me. That's horrendous, isn't it? I actually had this once on a job where, it was a 12 volt system and it had like an 11 volt drop or something. So what can cause these drops as well? And you have to be careful about this. As you've seen what we've been looking at so far is you might have this um, problem, but you could have actually say on the lamp connector itself in the harness where it plugs into the bulb, you could have corrosion just here. It doesn't mean you've got it on the wiring, does it? And to do that, well, you would need to do some special jiggery pokery. I like to call it. And in this case, usually what I like to do is, I like to, again, I've got the power probe for this, but you just ground the meter, you know. All oh, this voltage drop going negative, negative, positive, positive, it doesn't really do much. I mean, it's okay and all that business, but, you know. So we start, I've got 0.8 there. And I, again, I'm just going to go down the harness until I find such a point, which in this case is the other side of that resistor, until I actually have 4.11 volts. And then I know on the vehicle between point A and point sort of B, the bulb, I've got a, a problem. And I just go down the harness like that and until until I find suddenly I've now got 4.11 volts and I haven't got this like voltage drop of 0.82. It's as simple as that. And this is what we did, we did on that mini. You just go to source. That's why we start with a reverse switch. If it doesn't work at the reverse switch or we have these voltage drops in the reverse switch, sort of all the way back. We know we've got a problem, a bad problem between the reverse switch at the front of the car and the light at the back. And then we need to find a point in the harness where we're going to intercept and start making some measurements. I usually start halfway down the car at the, at the C pillar or something like that, or the B pillar or something like that, if it's a wiring fault. And then again, very lastly, all you need to, to make sure when you've got these things is check your connectors first because, you know, this, this resistance could be anywhere in the harness, but what if it is only kind of at your connector on the reversing lamp? In which case, you could probably go down the harness a bit, burn a wire back a few inches away, see if it's clean copper or not. It might be green. Keep cutting down the harness until you get to a point where, ah, suddenly I've got some clean copper and I know I've just got water in it. But what can cause this as well is also the actual connector contacts as well. So it could be the wiring, it could be the connector, and it's up to you lot to, to work that out.